He's up front. <laughs> you know about the telescope? It was all built in England, including the dome. I mean, there's a Sinai. Uh, it was all built there, assembled there, then completely taken apart and brought over here, and then reassembled. So when you look around here, you'll see that it's not really, it's just the screws that they used to put this thing back together with. We actually found old photos of this all being assembled over in England. Uh, this is the south pier, the big blue piece of concrete here. There's a north pier and a south pier. The telescope is up on the next level, on the observing floor. This also goes down two stories into the ground. Holy crap. So it can be very stable. Just to the west of here is, is crane tracks that go by. So you put your hand on here and feel it vibrate. The telescope will not. Of course. The other thing about when they built the telescope here in 1935, uh, there were only 1,200 residents in Richmond Hill. Yeah, 1,200. Now there's like 200,000. Everything is grown around here. So anyways, let's go upstairs, see what's going. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, it's a 74 inch. 74 inch diameter mirror. The second largest <laughs> the second largest one is in Victoria, and actually the one in Victoria is older, it was built in uh, 1918, 72-inch diameter. So in Clarence, it was the second largest telescope in the world in 1935. Think about it. I mean, now we've got a pack. Instead of the Cassegrain secondary, there's a Newtonian secondary going around. She would put a camera up here. Now, normally when you're guiding photographs, or guiding a spectra, you have to use a hand paddle to make sure the telescope perfectly tracks. Now, telescopes do a pretty good job of it, but it's got to be perfect or else you get streaks or blobs or anything else like that. And again, since this is a computerized, and go back into the old days, you can hide everything manually. So, if, if you're using the... <laughs> and again, since this is old technology, I mean, not like the stuff that you saw me using that's down in California, to move this thing around, by the way, see these old setting circles? They work. There's also shaft encoders on there now, so we have it hooked up to a program called The Sky. So that'll tell us where it's pointing. So we can look at that on the monitor. But other than that, sending circles still work. And this is how you move it. In RA. Oh, awesome. <laughs> this is 23 tons of telescope. I You're jacked. <laughs> <laughs> it's old. <laughs> it's And no, I will not let the junior astronomers do that. What <laughs> <laughs> about the older one? And I know everybody's waiting to see this one. We want to see it open. <laughs> six inch we'd get people to lie on the floor inside the dome and we'd rotate the dome 
and see how fast we get people dizzy. <laughs> oh, it was always good. The thing, also the thing with that telescope, the floor on the 36 inch at Lick Observatory goes up and down, water, water hydraulics. Here, you need ladders to get up and down to, to look at stuff. But again, most of the time, you know, when it was used for science, you're not looking. Real astronomy, you don't look. You use now, you know, CCD cameras and use those type of, types of detectors. But for the public programs the Toronto Center is running, you know, we wind up having all the public up here, the kids, the scouts, and they get to climb the ladder and look at stuff. For you technical types, we run into a few problems. We can't look at any object in the sky for the public. Why? Because if we wanted to point something all the way down there, the eyepiece would be way up there and might have to use like the really tall ladder that you see over there. And it's usually not very conducive for kids and families to try and climb up there. So usually we have to find objects that are close to the meridian way up in the sky. So that's why usually if you come up here during the summer, we're only looking at just, you know, the standard like M13 and, you know, certain objects like that, as well as because of the light pollution, it's much easier to see the brighter objects anyway through the telescope. So sometimes when we're looking at planets like Jupiter or Saturn that are lower down, that's when, you know, we'll be forced to let people climb up there. But again, you don't put it in any way that would be harmful. And this summer we're going to wind up redoing all of this as well. I mean, we had a match, we had a computer match the color of paint because it's a historical you know, item. And this year we want to clean out all this stuff as well. What's all the paint again? Oh, it's paint paint. No, I know. No, but the paint, this place has been painted enough times over the years. The other thing that, that, that's kind of interesting, if you take a look at old photographs of this place online, you'll find that it had different control panels here. And one of the old panels you will see has two little TV monitors on it. So normally in the old days before having encoders, you would look over here, you know, and you would see this thing going around over there to, to take a look at where your RA coordinate was, and then you could climb underneath the counterweight, excuse me, underneath here is where you can see the declination wheel. Oh. So what UT did somewhere back in the late 60s, early 70s, is they put in a couple of closed circuit TV cameras, just so they wouldn't have to walk around to look at the RA and deck. So this way it would come up on little TV monitors. <laughs> now, a few other things to point out. This motor has been in here since somewhere in the late 30s, early 40s. This little motor is all is the RA drive. It's all you need. But the thing is, it gets really hot. Now, during the winter, it's not a problem. But during the summer, we got to use this very high-tech cooling system. <laughs> that is what this fan is here for. All it does is gets a little closer, chills the motor down, just keeps it cool. That's as bad as the scope. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you gonna lift it? Yeah. Go ahead. Wrong girl. <laughs> uh, during, during the winter, it gets a little stiff. In the summer, it's a little bit easier.